Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our summary video of the webinar with Dr. Sam Barringer. My name's Hugh Archibald and I am joined as always by our good friend Ian Sawyer but of even greater delight is today we are joined by Stephanie Sam. Steph, the newest member of our team. Mate, it is great that COVID has finally let you down into Victoria and it's great to have you here as part of today's video. Sam's webinar was fantastic because it really actually had a look at BRD, or as he liked to call it BRS, in a very, very different light. And Ian, that was probably where I'd like to start, if that's all right with you. Look at that difference between disease versus syndrome. What do you think Sam was really getting at from that? What was your take home message? I like that, and it was probably Sam's almost his central pillar of his message. And it's that multifactorial nature of the syndrome. The syndrome that takes into account animal factors and environmental factors and pathogen factors, bring them all together in a manner that's very hard to predict and, and but you know probably more accurately captures the, the impact on the animal's performance. As opposed to the old fashioned view of a, a syndrome, you know, BRD, which is very much a, a pathogen centric approach. You know, I know the pathogen is there, it's pastorella or it's a homophilus or whatever, and I will treat that pathogen. And if I treat that pathogen, all will be well. And that probably hasn't been the case. And it certainly very much explains why the strategies that we've used for so long in the, in the feedlot industry in particular haven't really progressed us a long way. We've gone down that pathogen approach and it hasn't actually improved us a whole lot. So that probably sort of asks the question, I'll, I'll invite you to make a comment at this point, Steph, is we've got the animal-centric approach, which is probably more uh, Sam's point, versus that pathogen approach. What do you see some of the side benefits, I guess, of looking at the whole animal system as opposed to just the pathogen? So as Sam put it, like a holistic approach to not just that pathogen animal relationship, but yeah, the whole host interactions with the environment in terms of reduced reliance and use on antimicrobials and uh, yeah, just improved overall respiratory health. Yeah, that's a great point. And so if we look at that, there's a lot of things that we can do incidentally with just in our fundamental management that are going to make a difference. And Ian, do you got a couple of thoughts you want to start with? Um, well, one of the things that Sam certainly touched on was, was the diet scenario, um, diet and nutrition. I guess we're a diet and nutrition company, so we'll, we'll focus on that to start with. That whole glucose drawdown of the animal that's under stress, um, inflammation is a massive drawdown on glucose, and, and it's very hard to make any growth without glucose. Um, you know, glucose is the main driver of of meat deposition, if we've got inflammation, if we've got cortisol, if we've got an animal feeling that, that um, prey, that host prey relationship, oh, all the glucose is, is hoovered up and, it, and it's taken away. Um, you know, Steph can talk about um, the impact of, of environment and some of the stuff that she's done around heat stress and, and leaky gut and that sort of stuff. Throw to you, Steph, that's, that's your sort of joy. Yeah, sure, thanks, Ian. So when we're looking at the environmental, so there's a, quite a few environmental factors, but specifically when we look at heat stress, if you think if that animal was already immunocompromised, launching an immune response, mm. they're compromised in their respiratory ability to dissipate that body heat, then th that animal with respiratory problems is going to be sort of more heat stressed. Uh, mm. And it's not just environmental factors, it's also that handling, how we handle stock, um, low stress stock handling, particularly around induction into the feedlot when they're already quite stressed. So any way we can reduce sort of that, that stress on the animal to improve respiratory health. Yeah, really well put. Now, as Ian alluded to before, we, Feedworks, um, are very much a, a nutrition company. And we, we look to those nutrition interventions. And we're really, really proud of our association with Diamond V. They bring us products like NatureSafe, which have got some fantastic data. And if we look at NatureSafe in particular, this is a product that's a little bit your baby again, Steph. What are some of those things about NatureSafe that could really help us improve our, our respiratory health in our cattle? Sure, so NatureSafe has a real extensive database. Uh, studies show that it's really good at reducing the prevalence and severity of respiratories. It's also got some great data in terms of uh, from induction right through the feeding period, reduces the number of pulls, the number of health treatments, and it also improves when you do get a sick animal, that uh, response of the animal to the antimicrobials or the antibiotics. 
Absolutely, and one of the cool things about NatureSafe is it's not just sick animals that helps. It actually helps the whole group, and we see some of our biggest responses from improving that immunity. We see some of our best responses from where we're going into what we perceive as healthy herds or, or yards or groups. We actually see the response at its greatest significance almost going into perceived healthy animals, don't we? It's really, really, it's a fascinating area. It really is worth investigating more. Um, and the best part about it is, is if we try to bring this to a conclusion, is it actually improves our response to antibiotics and thus in turn reduces our reliance on antibiotics. Those two things together go on, improve the welfare of the cattle and within our care, and it improves the profitability of the whole overall yard. Now, it's great that we improve the welfare, but it's where that we get a welfare improvement that's improving the profit of the yard, and all of a sudden it gives us something we can market to the consumer about our welfare, our reduced antibiotic use and reliance. There's a really strong story there from both for the consumer, but also from the yard economics, that it's a pretty exciting sort of a product. And, and we'd only be too happy to share that information with you. So if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to give Steph a call. And uh, she's more than too happy to forward some information, I'm absolutely sure. So until next time, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching our short summary as always. Uh, we'll be back with another video here towards the end of March. And until then, stay safe, stay well, and uh, good luck, bye.